Good morning. We've been talking about peace of conscience. Peace of conscience. As our conscience is free. Now, we've been in many messages on this, and we still, I still get feedback that I'm really not, I don't really know how to do this. I, I'm just uptight all the time. I don't, I don't know what it is. I'm not being a good mother. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm continually fighting Satan as a father. I'm, I'm tempted to lust to people in the office. I, I think I'm a bad Christian. I, uh, I, I, just, I just don't feel like I'm doing it right. And uh, I, I've, I've heard many, many th different things through the years. Now, here's what I'm talking about. How do I really have peace of conscience. We've been in this for, I don't know, four or five sessions. And the hour feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. If I don't have, what do the shoes give me? Mobility, stability, the ability to charge, the ability to hold the sword, the ability to do everything. If I'm toppling over, I'm not going to be able to stand against the devil. Peace, peace is so important that we have it. I'm just not sure I'm cut out to be the kind of Christian that, uh, I mean, I, I feel like a loser, I'll be honest. I just don't, I, I don't, I don't understand the Bible that well. I don't understand all the things you're talking about. And I just feel like, you know, hey, okay, I want to read you a few verses. You believe God, I know you do. All right, well, let's look here. Romans 8, 28, you know it. And we know all things work together for good to those that love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. All things, all things, all things. Bad, good, indifferent, mistakes, bad choices, all things. Well, I don't know if you can work that. All things, all things. Okay. For whom he foreknow, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called, those he called, those he justified, those he justified, he also glorified. Now, in that predestination, calling, justification, glorification process, I don't see anything about your doing anything. It's all God. He's going to make sure you get there. Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing, that he that begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's the, to the last day, that last breath you take, or either till he comes back. Confident of this very thing, that he, be, that he that began something in me when I got saved, will conform it, he will complete it on the day it, when, when he shows up, it'll be a done deal. Didn't say anything in there about me doing anything. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Now, I'm not sure you want to challenge God on those things. You're his. He bought you with a price. You belong to him. He's going to make sure that you get there. He is holding your hand, the Bible tells us in Psalms and other places. It's not going to let you go. What does he tell us in Isaiah? That he has engraved us upon the palms of his hand. He can't forget us. A nursing child may be forgotten of its mother, but he says, I'll never forget you. No. With that in mind, how do I get there? I want to give you four things. Four words. You become a broken vessel. I don't think it's difficult to do, is it? People with pride, I wonder if they're even saved. How can you be proud and compared to the word of God and compared to what Christ did and compared to the mistakes you've made? How in the world could you ever be proud? I was a wretch. How could he save amazing grace that saved a wretch like me? Once was blind, but now I see. I was lost but now I'm saved. Eternal gratitude for ever saving you and me. That's how you start. A broken vessel. Then you move on. 
a disciplined vessel. That means somebody that's surrendered to the truth of God's word. You're not giving your opinion as, well, my opinion is about 50% and the word of God's about 50%. So I think that we'll work it out together. Good luck with that. <laughs> the heart's deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. It'll trick you every time. You go to the word of God and let that tell you who you are inside. You don't start telling God who you are. He knows who you are. And so I let the word of God be over my life and discipline my life, and lead my life, and direct my life, and I seek to walk in his word. Next, very important. Not only am I broken, not only am I disciplined, I'm also a dead vessel. If any man come after me and fails to pick up his cross, what was a cross? A means of execution. And come after me and follow me. He that loses his life gains his life. What is that? I give away this life you. I was told by my son who attended a missions conference that there's more slavery today than there's ever been before in the history of the world. And they take some of these kids at six years old and they work them 14 hours a day without a break. And if they cry for food or anything, they spank them. I can mention the countries that that's going on in right now, but I won't. Not ours, praise God, but it's happening. Slave trafficking like you wouldn't believe. Sex trafficking with the girls, it's unbelievable. Now, with, with that in mind that's going on, and we have the gospel that changes people. That's the only thing that really works is changing people's hearts. Because money, the love of money is the root of all evil. How can we do that? Become a dead vessel. You know what, God, I'm willing to surrender everything for you. People don't get peace in this life because they're addicted to the quote-unquote good life. I just can't give it up. I mean I, I mean, I want a better life. I don't want a worse life. I mean, I don't want to give up any. I don't want to suffer any way. I don't want to, uh, well, then don't follow Jesus because he said the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man doesn't have a place to lay his head. We've got to be willing, a dead vessel. I use it all the time. James Calvert, when he was going to the um, cannibals, and he, he was going to the Indies. He said, uh, the captain of the ship said, if, if you go, you will die. He said, it's not a problem. We died before we left. A dead vessel, finally. A trusting vessel. Everything you do, I trust you. You got it. I'm yours. I'm broken. I'm disciplined. I'm dead. And lastly, I am trusting you. Though you slay me, I will yet trust you. You go through that process on a daily basis. And I promise you, there is no way, in light of what the Word of God says, if you apply it, that you can't have peace. You'll have peace. Peace in your heart that you desperately long for. God will give it. God bless you, and I pray you have a great day.